Okay. I guess we can go on and get started. As I do my intro, I know people will start jumping on in. Um, more people will be jumping in. Uh, my name is Tanika. I'm an independent filmmaker and got a little feedback. Uh, I live in the DC area and thought it would be really cool if I started to sit down and have behind the scenes uh, type of chats with more independent filmmakers. I've gone to a lot of a lot of uh, film festivals and seen a lot of films by uh, filmmakers that um, have awesome films, but after they did their film festival uh, circle run, uh, those films just sit on a shelf and they never really get to reach the audience uh, that they should reach, the, the number of people that they should reach. And so I said, you know what, I'll go in and take it take the initiative, sit down with some folks, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to sit down with a different filmmaker uh, every week from all different types of genres, uh, writers, directors, editors, um, producers, and just uh, pick their brain on their current and past projects and uh, future projects and what they um, think of and you know, view um, black filmmakers uh, in the independent um, filmmaking arena. And tonight we have our very first filmmaker up, Omari Matlock of Rebirth Films. We met, um, I'm not sure, how many years ago was it that we met? That was uh, 2013, we met at the HBFF. That's right, Hollywood Black Film Festival. Yeah. Uh, side note, they are taking uh, submissions right now for their festival I next know it. Next February, February, I think. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Next February. So awesome. I would brought you to HBFF. We can start there, talk a little bit about that since uh, we brought that up. Okay, well, uh, that was actually our second time at HBFF. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Heart. Yeah, that was our second mm -hmm. time. Um, it, was, it, was, it was funny because um, that's actually the very first film festival that we had ever um, been nominated to go to. And we actually went back in... 04. 04 was our, our very first film that we had ever did, which was crazy because it was a feature. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Out the it gate was, with a feature. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was crazy. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where um, um, being naive, or not really naive, but just uneducated on the way to do things mm. actually worked in our favor. Um, we, started with a, we started with a feature. We didn't know that that's, that wasn't what you were supposed to do. Um, and we shot it and produced it and we sent it to HBFF and a couple other film festivals and we got nominated. So there we were with our very first film. Actually, it was weird because it's my very first time ever flying. So I fly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was insane. But um, there, there we were at HBFF and it was, it was an amazing experience. It actually, it taught me a lot. I mean, a lot of people kept asking, well, how are you here? Like, how is that even possible? Your very first film and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't know. I didn't know that there was rules to what, what, what the order was, you know? <laughs> but see, that's a testament to sometimes you just have to throw the rules out and just go for it. Absolutely. Instead of, of, of thinking so much about how, you know, how the industry said exactly. things are supposed to happen Absolutely. and just make it happen. Absolutely. So cool. Absolutely. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. That was yeah. the second time. That okay, was, that, so cool. Yeah. So, so the second time, actually, that was in 2013. Um, almost 10 years later, but um, that's when we did our, our, our a short film that we uh, titled Descent of a Superstar, which was basically, it was kind of like a, just just a lot of film buddies of mine, we wanted to get together and just to just do something cool, you know? Um, mm -hmm. It was kind of like a test that we were that we were running just on some, some effects and things like that. And by the time we got, you know, a few shots done, we were like, man, this is kind of good. I mean, we might, <laughs> <laughs> we might want to, finish this so we kind of put together the rest of the story and we you know submitted it to a few, few film festivals and I think we had gotten three that year for that one um and then HBFF was one again so it was kind of like it was kind of nice being back seeing Tanya seeing everybody you know right, right, yeah, right. yeah 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 we've, we've grown <laughs> as filmmakers a, a, a crazy amount from you know 04 to 2013 so oh yeah you know um and even still that was a super low budget film but um, it played well. People really liked it. It was just, you know, it was it was it was a fun project, you know. So, and I, that's where I met you guys. I saw, I, saw mm -hmm. you guys. I actually did a, a, a 
an interview there too. Uh, uh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, interview with hubby, Bobby Rock. Yeah, Bobby Rock. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was a, that was a great interview. So, so yeah, that was uh, that was kind of our second time being at HBFF, and it was pretty awesome. Okay, so how did you initially get your start in film? And then you can talk about uh, which genre of film is your primary genre. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I was born, I'm born as an artist, you know, from day one, from day zero. My mom gave me crayons and everything, and I've been drawing and painting and sculpting kind of like every since. So, um, you know, leaving high school, I had to figure out what I was going to do. I, I had no idea what I was going to do. Uh, my mom suggested that I do animation. I'm like, ah, okay, we'll, we'll see. You know, so I tried animation and I absolutely hated it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hated it. Um, but, but, but we did have a course in editing. And at the mm -hmm. time, you know, I was always like, like I was a comic book geek. So I would draw comic books and write storylines. And that was my thing, you know, but I, I never thought that it would actually be like a career. Mm. Um, but yeah, but we had a course in editing. And um, I wrote, directed, and produced my short, which was my um, my uh, final project or whatever it was. And it was, it turned out. I mean, they really loved it. I look back now, I cringe, but but <laughs> but uh, but they really really liked it. And that kind of, I just, I was bitten at that point by that movie bug. I just knew that that was what I wanted to do, you know. Yeah. So so from there, that's when I said, I, you know, I wrote my buddy Alex into it. I said, man, we're gonna do a feature. You know, <laughs> and he was like, oh, OK, so you know, we kind of moved on. But um, but but doing my very first film, it was like a vampire film or something like that. But it was very it was very like grounded in, in, in a reality, not so mm. super fantasy or whatever, yeah. uh, because, I've you know, growing up, I've always liked the, the sci fi, the horror, you know, all that okay. kind of crazy. I, I always like that. You know, I've always liked those type of things. But when I started doing films and I was telling people like, hey, I'm going to be a filmmaker and I'm going to make movies. And I was, I'm in Ohio, you know, in Ohio, that's like, that's, that's insane talk, you know? <laughs> exactly. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's it's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, pet, okay. Pet, yeah. Pet, pet, pet. Okay, right, you do exactly. that. <laughs> yep, yep. But when people started to, started to kind of take me seriously, they were like, oh, what, you going to make some gangster films? You're going to, you know, and it kind of, it kind of offended me a little bit, you know, because I felt like, you know, I felt like it was kind of a, an insult by saying that because I'm black, because I'm young, I don't know about anything else. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, so, right. So, mind you, I do have some some stories that I would like to tell along that, you know, that path, but I've kind of decided not to do it because that's what's expected of me, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, we've kind of just stuck to uh, the science fiction, the horror, and like the, like dark fantasy, you know, yeah. and then and it ended up kind of being a plus because there's very few of us that that do it, you know. Mm, so. I was gonna get into that yeah. later. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so and that's kind of I mean that that's been our thing. Um, that's what we plan to do from now until whenever you know, <laughs> till till we're done. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. that's that's it. That's kind of our baby. That's where we're gonna be at. So you said. Um, well, or did you say you write, direct, produce, mm -hmm. you do some, um, cause I've seen some of your artwork. You do, uh, your own storyboarding. Do you oh, do your yeah, own storyboarding? Yeah. A storyboard. And I can I do concept art. Um, I do a lot. I mean, it's, you know, it's all art to me, you know, um, a lot, a lot of the ideas, uh, most of them come from, you know, come from in here somewhere, and I mm -hmm. kind of draw them up or I'll sculpt them. And then I have a lot of guys that I work with that are super talented artists that, you know, I can, I can give them a concept and say, hey, listen, you know, this is kind of what I'm going for. But I'm, I'm super collaborative. You know, I love, I love collaboration. I love teamwork, you know, and, and you know, yeah. the guys, they'll get it. And then they'll be like, well, you know what? It'll look a little cooler if we blah, 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 you know. And, then, and before you know it, you know, everyone's kind of putting in their little, yeah two cent and then it's just this amazing yeah. whatever it is and it's like you know I, I just it's I love it you know but yeah I, I do a little bit of everything how does that feel don't you know wearing so many hats how stressful is that is it not too stressful because you actually have a passion for each thing that you're doing like how, how does that feel because I think um, and I'm sure a lot of uh, filmmakers will agree. Being an independent filmmaker means you have, you, you know, you have to wear a bunch of different hats. 
but um, you can speak to that somehow that feels. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it can definitely be stressful. I think it's stressful mainly because you have so many things to do and it doesn't matter how good you are. Um, if you if you have too many hats on, something's going to lack. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's just it's just more so about how much energy you have and how much effort you can put in. You only have a hundred hundred percent, you know, no matter what. So the more you divide, and who you're able to work with mm -hmm, and collaborate with. Right, right, right. So, but you know, for me, I've I've been very blessed to to meet a lot of very talented, you know, uh, guys and girls along the way. And you know, once we get together and we start thinking in the same direction, you know, things start to move. But a lot of times, you know, especially in indie, you don't have the money, you know, you don't have the right. money, you don't always have the resources. So it's like, for me, it's vital to know how to do a little bit of everything. I mean, yeah, there isn't too much that I don't know how to do. I'm not going to say that I'm a master at, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of them, but I'm very efficient, um, yeah. you know, but, so, but the things that I would, my goal is to just eventually get to the point where all I do is write direct and produce that's it yeah I'm doing, do mm -hmm. anything else you mm -hmm. know, I know how to do. The top three uh -huh. yeah yeah i know how to do all the other ones you know <laughs> all of them but you know it, it's it's strenuous it definitely is yeah it is it is it is so um we um dropped a little bit uh earlier about our representation of blacks in fantasy or horror and you meeting other filmmakers or going to festivals or, you know, what is it like um, in, the, in the, like the number of people you see? How many of us do you see? Do you speak to people that would like to but don't know how? Or are, are we just not there because we're not feeling it? You know, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a little bit of all of the above. Um, I remember talking to Tanya the, the first year that we were in the film HBFF and she said, um, or maybe it might've been Jacqueline. Yeah, it was Jacqueline. Jacqueline, she said, literally you were the only submission that was anything other than, you know, a, a, a black comedy or, or a gangster film. And she was like, I just found what you guys were doing very refreshing and different. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's been a lot of people who've, who've sown seeds into me that kind of, made me realize that the path that I was on was the right one and to stick to it. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, so yeah, I haven't, I haven't come across a ton of um, black filmmakers that, that are doing, you know, uh, fantasy or, or sci-fi or horror or anything like that. I haven't run across a lot. We did last year or not last year, but uh, the 2013, we did meet Kevin Grievous, which is um, the, the writer of, um, um, oh, I Frankenstein and the mm. Underworld, the Underworld series. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we had like we had a nice little conversation with him. He was a really cool guy, but you know he was just kind of advising us to to kind of stay in that lane, you know, because it wasn't yeah. a lot of us and and yeah. just you know to protect ourselves and be careful and you know so it was kind of cool being able to talk to you know someone on on his level that you know ha have that has and still do do you know the, the the science fiction and the, the dark horror and stuff like that so um i, I don't know i mean i just it, I, I read an article actually that he did in uh indie wire and he was saying he said that um he felt like a lot of black filmmakers don't do science fiction um or fantasy because and i'm paraphrasing um Basically, it's hard to dream about other worlds and aliens and things like that when you're when you're having a rough time finding a job and feeding yourself, you know, so it's hard to dream. And I was mm. like, you know, I, I definitely can see where he's going with that. And I, and I definitely do agree with that to a certain degree. But um, I also I remember you actually sent me the um, uh, I think it was like an invite. It was called the uh, Blacks and Blacks and Sci-Fi. Oh, yeah. Fantasy. And I was in Baltimore and I was like, mm -hmm. when I, when I heard the title, I was like, does that even go together? You know, black. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I gotta go check this out. So, and I appreciate, thank you for, for, for looking out with that one. Cause uh, I went and checked it out and it was so eye opening. I just, I had no clue that there was, that there were so many black science fiction writers. Like I just, I had no clue. And um, in fact, the, um, the, um, uh, the professor or whatever he he was basically informing us that science fiction was created by blacks 
Oh, wow. And I, yeah. And I was wow. like, well, how so? And, you know, so he he went through and read like little excerpts from different um, books that went all the way back to like the 1800s. It might have been further than that, but it was for sure the 1800s. And the stories that they wrote were really interesting. The stories that they wrote was they wanted to have families with white picket fences and houses and go to the grocery store. That was their sci-fi. So it, it really blew my mind. So he said, think about this. He said, our sci-fi is aliens and robots and people with superhuman strength and powers and things. That's sci-fi, right? The most outlandish right. thing you could think of. At that time, ah. that, the most outlandish things that you could think of being black at that time was being equal or or not being persecuted for whatever whatever reason. And I just, it just really sense. just, yeah, it just really that blew my sense. mind. Yeah, yeah, and it was very eye-opening. But, and again, that was another sign that I was like, stick to what you're doing. Stick to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Stick to what you're doing, definitely. Because when I saw it, I was like, well, you know, this is really cool. And I think for me, it's like uh, the same when I, you know, you know, met you or I've met a few other um, uh, sci-fi writers or when I meet um, comic book writers that are black. I'm like, you know, I don't know. I guess there just needs to be more organizations or, or um, think tanks of, you know, how to, you know, sit down with those type of genres. Because I've met probably, I've probably met filmmakers from every major, like, genre, including, like, comic books and um um, anime. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm oh, like, yeah. you know, this. Um, <coughs> people would think that we're not out there doing these types of projects, but we definitely are. Right. right. Definitely are. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. So we can fast forward a little bit to your most current project. All right. Mm -hmm. I see you have your poster up behind you. Oh you yeah, yeah, yeah. See, there it is. That's that was from the I, blood fairies. <laughs> a lot of these up here. I mean, like this is another one that's uh, we're working on. Um, it's called a silent district. I have a lot of projects, but I, I keep them all up on the wall. It just kind of reminds me of where I've been and where I'm going. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah. So so yes. Um, Tales from the blood fairies is is a series that we. Um, we kind of, we dreamt up like right after we got done with uh, Descent of the Superstar. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we knew that our biggest hurdle was we were always producing original content. You know, um, we always, uh, we love original stories. We, we just love original content. But the biggest obstacle with original content is if you don't have the funding to educate people on your world, the, right. history, the, the lore or whatever, um, it's, it's harder to get people involved, you know? Right. So um, we, we follow a lot of guys that are just brilliant, like Freddie Wong that's on, um, that's on YouTube. And you know what he does is he basically does his own versions of Mario Kart or whatever, just these different videos or whatever. Now he's grown a lot bigger than that now, but you know, we kept thinking to ourselves, like, how do we, how do we do that? Because ours is horror and sci-fi and he was always doing comedy or action skits. You know, so we, we were like, well, how do we do that? How do we take something that people are familiar with and be able to kind of like um, um, just redo it in our own fashion? And I was just sitting down reading uh, fairy tales to my youngest son at the time. And I was reading like a little old lady who lived in a shoe. And it just kind of blew me away because I, I don't remember. I don't remember ever really reading it up until that point. And I was just like, what am I reading? You know, <laughs> it was just so crazy because it, it said, um, the story goes, there once was a little old lady who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She fed them all porridge without any bread, whooped them all slumber and put them to bed. And I was just like, okay, wait, wait, now, wait. I don't <laughs> remember that either. <laughs> I'm like, I, don't, I don't remember. And I'm like, is that how a real story goes? So I had to go look. Right. I mean, I just, I just couldn't believe it. So. And, you know, I was just thinking to myself, did the kids wake up? You know, I mean, right. and of me reading a story, I'm just thinking to myself, like, well, why do these stories, you know? Why are they childhood stories? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I went back and I just really started to kind of revisit, like, um, fairy tales in general, you know? And then I said, well, okay. I said, well, let's, let's break this down because I'm, I'm kind, of a, kind of a nerdy guy when it comes to, like, uh, like just intelligence and learning things and trying to, you know, grow and 
Yeah, I, I love that mm -hmm. stuff. You know, so mm -hmm. I said, well, let me let me go check this out. So I said, well, what is a fairy? We assume we know what a fairy is. It's Tinkerbell. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when I read in uh, read online, the fairy spans from a demon all the way to the little mystical creature that we know of. And I was like, well, that's a hell of a span. You know, you know what I'm saying? So if a fairy is telling you a tale, how do you know which one you're talking to? Mm. So, you know, so it kind of, that actually kind of spawned a series. You know, I went back and I looked, where did fairy tales come from? They didn't come from Walt Disney, you know? <laughs> I mean, it was just so much, it was just so eye-opening. So I was like, you know, I talked to my buddies and I'm like, I got it. I, I got the next project. And, and usually they, they never fight. They just like, all right, let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> so, um, you know, I just told them like, you know, let's do um, a twisted version of fairy tales, more back to the original, back to the grim version. And, mm. um, you know, I kind of pitched it to them. They loved it. And we just started moving. We just started moving on it. And we started creating. Um, we knew that we, we knew that we wouldn't be able to produce the whole thing. But our goal was, um, we set out, we, we made this list. We said, listen, let's do the most ignorant, most ridiculous things that most indie filmmakers wouldn't attempt to because it's too much money. It's too much. Like just, we just made a list. We just made a list. Uh -huh. I said, I want to shoot on a jet. I want to, <laughs> like, I mean, just, we just named this ridiculous list and it was so crazy. I didn't even think about it until, until recently. I was like, man, you know, we accomplished everything on the list except for one thing. The only reason why we didn't do that one thing is because we didn't really have anywhere in the story for it to happen. But I mean, we what just, was the one thing? Oh, we we just wanted to shoot like this super crazy fight scene or gun battle in the oh, rain in slow okay. motion, okay. you know. But but we basically okay. we just we knew that um, with this proof of concept trailer that we were going to produce, it had to look and feel amazing. You know, it yeah. just had to feel huge. It just so that's what we did every. Every shot that we shot, every location that we picked, it had to look like we had a million, two million, five million dollars, you know. So, yeah. so we did it. So we produced. Um, it was it was very ambitious. We shot five short films at the same time, simultaneously. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was insane. It was insane. Did you, um, did you guys uh, crowdfund? No, we didn't. We should have. Okay. We really should <laughs> have. It's, it's not it's, too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny, it's funny cuz we do we do plan to shoot the pilot um um next year. So we will be doing a Kickstarter for that or Indiegogo or whatever it may be. So, you know, we can check that out maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe we can get some love on that. But, um, Definitely. So yeah. five at the same time. Did yeah. you wait to finish one before you started the second or is just five just all in in, in, oh my. in the same locations? And we just, we shot scenes, we turned around, flipped and shot another scene and another, you know, filmmaking, you're doing yeah. nothing but picking corners and, you know, anyway, so we pick locations that we knew we could use for multiple stories. And uh, when you're watching, there's no way that you'll ever know, but you right. know, that was, that was our way of, of making the best of our budget, you know? Uh -huh. So we just shot it as one, almost like one long film, but it's all different films. And it was like, trying to keep everything together. Like, what movie are we shooting? <laughs> right, right. So uh, it was it was a lot. It was a lot managing that, but we did. How many days on set was that for the five? We did, um, we did six straight. Mm -hmm. And then we had, I believe we had about five more pickup days. Okay. But, um, but yeah, or it might've been less than that. But we did six straight and we did most of it. You know, we did most of it straight. I just six crazy grueling days just i was about to say they had to be long days oh god yeah they were long they were long so it's just i, I i'm kind of all my guys know me i <laughs> don't believe in starting anything that we won't finish I, yeah. I just i just feel like that's a complete waste of time like don't say it you're going to do something and start something if you're not going to finish it that's like yeah. stopping halfway through fixing dinner what's what's the point like, <laughs> you know, so you know, they, they know me and, and I love them, and, you know, but I'm like, we got to do it. We got to look. Go. Gotta do it. They're like, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, but we have so much fun on set. It's like, you know, if you're trapped on set for 14 hours, 
you just got to make it as fun as possible. You definitely you know? do. You definitely we, do. We have a lot of fun. We do a lot of work, but we have a lot of fun on set. What was uh, casting like? Like when you put out your casting call and, and said what you were were doing? Well, like I mean, did you get a lot of responses or it is? Yeah, a lot of people yeah. know uh, know me in the area. You know, I'm, okay. whenever I'm doing something, it's like, oh my god, you know, you know. So, <laughs> so it was like getting people to come out wasn't that big of a problem, but it was like getting okay. serious people because again, we're in Ohio. So and Ohio really just started to pick up, you know, just kind of starting to get the, the film bug. It's not like the East Coast or the West Coast, you know, but a lot of films are starting to come here now. So people are really starting to get serious about the craft um, a lot more than when I first got started here. But, you know, just having um, people come out and audition. We got a lot of a lot of really good ones. And then we got a lot of like, oh, like, <laughs> did you? <prepare? laughs> you <know? laughs> so it was it was it was great. I mean, we had a lot of people that came and auditioned. Um, you know, I had specific roles that I had picked out for, you know, a, 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 like I, I really wanted more blacks involved or whatever. But, you know, I just didn't find the, the right ones, you know, and, it, and that's yeah. the one thing about me. I would never sacrifice the integrity of the film for anybody, not even myself, right. you know. Right. So because then you're not truly doing it from your heart and exactly. it's going to come out crappy. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, we had a lot of a lot of great, you know, actors and actors come out and. Um, I just reached out to all of the uh, talent agents and I mean, you know, they sent out, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we got people, you know, I sent them out and then we yeah. held auditions. I think we did two days of auditions and um, we kind of narrowed it down and, you know, we went from there and we just started, we started cranking them out as soon as we got our cast and play, play, oh my goodness. We went for it. So on set um, makeup, what is that like? for doing sci-fi or horror because I I think I posted one picture. I think it was of Peter Pan. Was it a Peter Pan? Yeah. Just sitting with the book. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. So I was like, oh, I wonder what makeup is like. Cause it has to be more time consuming than the regular makeup oh, on set. Absolutely. Um it, it, it's one of those things. It really varies depending on the amount of makeup or prosthetics mm -hmm. or whatever it is. We have a great um, FX artist that lives and he's about two hours north of us in Tiffin, Ohio. And I mean, he just crafts the most amazing, anything that I can dream up. He's like, oh, I got it. You know, I got it. You know? And he makes it way better. But, you know. That's nice. Like, oh, God. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. But, um, you know, he always he always makes it in a way that it's easy for us to put together. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay. We obviously want to use foam latex and, and the best of the best of the best, but um, we don't have the, we didn't have the finances or the uh, resources to just, you know, have someone there. You like, say for instance, if you have a foam prosthetic face mask on, um, every edge has to be glue, glued down and you have to have multiples because if they, they sweat or it tears or you got to have multiple mm -hmm. applications. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. those are things that we have to keep in mind saying, okay, look, we don't, we don't have that kind of budget. So what can we do? You know, so yeah. we always kind of work around, you know, the fact that we don't have the budget and then we, we light accordingly. We shoot accordingly. You know, we just right, right, right. <laughs> kind of mind. Make it work. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of yeah. mindful of, um, you know, our budget and, and the restraints that our prosthetics have, you know, so um, they, they just vary. So do you, in your camp, you have someone who does music as well, or are you involved with the music for the film? Um, yeah, yeah. We have a guy uh, who did our score on this last film named John uh, DeVento, which is absolutely amazing. I love John. <laughs> I love John. I mean, again, I mean, I'm a, I'm a very, very particular guy. But, I, but again, I love to collaborate. You know what I'm saying? I, I always go in knowing exactly what I want, but I'm not afraid to deviate from that if there's something else better that's brought to the table, you know? Right. And um, right. with, with John, I mean, we, we had conversations about music. You know, I sent him samples of, hey, this is what I like. This is, this is what I'm going for. Um, for instance, on, um, on our uh, Three Little Pigs story with the wolf, you know, I, I told him that I, I needed this specific feel. And he was like, well, like, it's like what? So I sent him a sample of uh, Dracula Untold. Mm. And Dracula Untold was a heroic, dark character, you know? So he was like, got it, you know? It just, <laughs> but, 
but but I think that was probably the only one that I sent him a sample on where we just mm-hmm. sat and talked about feeling and emotion because I'm big on emotion and feeling from a scene and I just explained to him how you should feel you know and yeah. he like yeah. got it and he came back and my mouth was like <laughs> <laughs> you know so it's just like working with artists that that really get it and they're they're truly listening and then they're adding their artistic spin to it so yeah. you're always yeah. moving in the same direction you know yeah. so um so yeah john he he just i love john he really really did an amazing job on on tales from the blood fairy so yeah nice 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 so when you're filming like a horror story uh and do people get the vibe sometimes that it's scary do you know what I mean? So the people, so not the actors, because of course they're acting. Right, right, right. But the people watching, like, is there ever a, like when, like if the scene is all set and no, makeup is no. done, you know, people watching, are they just like, yeah, even though they're yeah. going to happen? Yeah, that does happen. I mean, I still find it weird, I guess, because I just know that it's movies and, you know, yeah. and, and I, I know that I look at it differently, but, um, like a lot of times some um, people don't break character, you know, they're in their, yeah. like, you yeah. know, they're in the moment or they're in their prosthetic and they're just scary, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I'm looking like, Oh, that's not right. Let's glue that. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. But um, you just have your film, your director eyes. Yeah. On. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And, and again, and I, wondered, I was like, you know, if I were ever like on like a nightmare on Elm street set or something like that. And Freddie, I'm like, I couldn't be on set, even though I know it's a movie. You know, I still wouldn't be able to. Do. I still I mean, wouldn't. Be. You know, it's it's like any other movie where you know one side of the set looks amazing and then the other side is fifty. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, so, the snack know. table. Right. Exactly. <laughs> a bunch of exactly. tables and lights. These hands everywhere. You know. So you know. Yeah. I, I guess you know people do get a little a little antsy, but you know, I guess you can get back into reality real quick. Just turn around and look. Everyone. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. right. So you have five episodes. You spoke of Three Little Pigs, The Old Woman in the Shoe. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Peter Pan. Peter Pan. The Little Mermaid. And then and then um, our fifth one is actually for another project, which is that the, um, Asylum District there, ah, which is a whole yeah. other one, which is like, you know, you know, the, the magic question is, ah, so what, what else do you have? What's next? I was right. like, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Right, your goal. Right, yeah. (laughs) So it's it's another project that we shot, you know, to follow up this one. So just just trying to stay ahead of the curve. I know that's right. So you have the five. You guys are going to start shopping the five before you move on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's um, it's it's kind of a new, it's a new thing for us because you know we've done projects before and we've. I mean, we haven't been able to do a lot of our own projects, not as many as we would like. You know, we we work, we freelance, we shoot all kinds of everything for everybody else. You know, mm-hmm. so you know, when we get a chance to do our pet projects, it's like, you know, oh yes, we finally get to do our own thing. Right. But but, but this one, um, uh, Tales from the Blood Fairies, we've already got people emailing us about it, like, send it, send it, send it, send it. We want to see yeah. it, you know. Yeah. So yeah. It's a good feeling, but it's, it's nerve wracking at the same time because we want to make the the right decision. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Like, and not feel rushed. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So for us, it's not about, oh yeah, we are on, you know, this, that. it's like, you know, we need to get into the right situation for us and for them, you know, so right. that we can grow Definitely. and we can continue to, to, to create in this business and, you know, everybody's happy. Everybody's making money, you know? So, yeah. so we're just kind of taking our time, but um, we have, we have quite a few people that are, that are interested and that's, that's definitely exciting. Uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, but anyone who's uh, hanging out with us right now, you are definitely um, able to send uh, Omari questions if you have any, and uh, we'll make sure that we get him to answer those um, as we're as we're going along here. Uh, let's see. So, and I also forgot to ask you, you have a nine to five as well, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So for people out there who say, oh, you know, I'm going to quit my job and make films. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got to you got to get to that point where your 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 filmmaking is making you quit. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, it, 95, it, just keep your 95 as your investor. 
yeah. of your dream. Mm-hmm. It's funny because, you know, I'm, I'm on Facebook and the social media and I have a lot of people, not a lot of people, but I have a few people who just always complain. And I'm like, okay, listen, I, I understand that there are obstacles, me better than a lot of people, you know, that I know, like I've, I've been through a lot, but I just feel like at the end of the day, we only live once as far as we yeah. know. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you are not living your dream, you're living someone else's dream. Right. If you're living someone else's dream. You're a tool. If you're okay with being a tool, don't, don't complain. Don't just, don't just complain. be a screwdriver, be the hammer, be whatever that person needs you to be. But if yeah. then you get out there and you make it work, make it happen any means, any way possible. Just that's right. Do it. You do it. And and it's funny because <clears throat> I've learned that the more you move forward and you put those blinders on, you don't see no no means absolutely nothing to me. Like no means mm-hmm. not right now to me. You know, so mm-hmm. I'm, okay, mm-hmm. I'll be back tomorrow. Are you sure? You, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like straight tunnel vision. And it just, just, just it irks me a little bit because I'm like, listen, it's not that hard. You just put one foot in front of the other, in one foot in front of the other. And it's not going to be the like- the ships are falling into place yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. not going to be there yeah. tomorrow. But the only way to make progress is to t- start one step at a time. <clears throat> so yeah. I just it's to start. You, you got to go for it. If you want it, go for it. That's the truth. <laughs> That is the truth. So let's see. We talked about um, Tales from the Blood Fairies, and we talked about what you're kind of working on for the future. Uh, let's see. What are, What is um, your thoughts on the representation or lack thereof of Blacks in Hollywood in film? Well, I mean, I think, I think it's definitely changing. I mean, I, th- mm-hmm. I think that... Hollywood is starting to see that there's money in black stories, which I, I don't even know what took so long, but, but okay. Right. But I think, I think more so, I don't really think it's Hollywood just finally wising up. I think it's the fact that there's so many other players in the game now. Yeah. Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, uh, Apple. I mean, like everyone's getting involved and yeah. they, they are taking quote unquote risks on independent filmmakers they're they're way outside of the box you know definitely all these original oh. series popping up right. oh my god this actually is original right and you're <laughs> you know? so, so i think what they're doing is i think they're listening to people you know they're listening to people instead of kind of like well we're going to give them what we want them to have or what we think they want it's like right. no they're going to give people what they want and and we live in a diverse world which you know which is crazy because I think I watched Avengers and, and I love Avengers, probably one of my favorite superhero movies of all time. But I'm they shot in Cleveland, Ohio. And I'm sitting there. Oh. Yeah, yeah, shot in Cleveland, Ohio. And and I'm sitting there and I'm like, Cleveland is very black. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it might it might maybe one black person in the whole scene. And I was like, do you know how hard you have to work not to have any black ex- Not in Cleveland. Or you're in Detroit, or you in, you know, New Orleans. I'm just like, how does this happen? Who, who's okay with Ooh, Exactly. But you, you know, you walk around D.C., you walk around New York, you walk around L.A., we're just mixed, beautiful people. Yeah. But in movies, you don't see that. So, I mean, I, I just think that, I think that the industry is finally starting to awaken to the fact that, yes, we are diverse. We are diverse yeah. in color, sex, um, everything, culture, religion, everything, everything yeah. you know, yeah. and people want to see it, you know? So, exactly. so I'm excited about that, you know? Maybe they will embrace, uh, you know, black core sci-fi. Maybe. I know, right? <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm excited about it. I think, I think you know, I think it's going to be, it's not going to move as fast as we want it to move, but I think it's it's on its way. It's moving, yeah, yeah. What does your <clears throat> excuse me? What did your son say about you making movies? Oh well, I mean, I've been making movies for like my daughter. I started making movies. I think she was two. She was hmm. two. She's sixteen. Okay. Oh. So, okay. Yeah. So I've been making movies as long as any of them. As long as 
any one of them can remember. They just, okay. that's what daddy does. That's all they know. Yep, yeah. that's all they know. That's all um, they know. If I'm not shooting someone else's commercial or music video or promo or whatever, I'm shooting my own. So that's that's what I do. And then my nine to five, I do film production, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean. Um, so that is just what you do. But yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. They're used well, to it. <laughs> you had a, um, you all had a premiere of Blood Fairies and, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A couple of episodes. That's so cool. It turned out nice. Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. We did um we did like a special screening. It, it's a screen that um well we plan to put the 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 short films out here uh very soon, mm-hmm. maybe around October or so, we're not sure, but but we plan to put them out really soon. But we had a special cut a version for cast and crew and you know locals. And they just, they loved it. I mean, we try to make it as nice as possible. We had the red carpet, the big, oh. uh, I mean, we did it big. It was, it was real big. It was nice. So it, it was, it was a fun experience. Um, I, My biggest thing, and I always say this, my biggest thing is, you know, people always ask, so what, what is your favorite part of the movie? What, how do you, I just love seeing all the faces of everybody who works so hard on something come yeah. together get the chance to see it. I love seeing just the teamwork, you know, all the struggle. Mm-hmm. When I watch mm-hmm. it, um, I mean, I see all the, the issues where I'm like, oh, we could have done that a little better. But it's just, <laughs> it's just the idea that all of us came together and put our all in and produced right. something that people enjoy, you know? So, exactly. so that made the premiere extra special, you know, just seeing everybody together, you know? Yeah. And, you know, and, sometimes and having I'm, something completed. Right, that right. You can be proud of, yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah. I forget that that they didn't, they don't know the whole story. They haven't seen anything. All they know is this one little boy, you know, that they, they worked on. Yeah. Turn out, and I'm like, oh yeah, I guess you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, it was it was a great. It was it was great. It was really fun. Good. Um, if you could uh, work with anyone, uh, who would that be, or any type of film? What type of film would that be? Woo! Okay, that's a loaded mm-hmm. question. Okay, so it is. Um, any type of film, I really enjoy science fiction. Um, I, that's probably my favorite genre. You know, okay. I, I would I would do something in science fiction. Um, I, I wouldn't care if it was in space or with dragons or you know, it just okay, just something you know, it's kind of out there. Um, and of course, I'm I'm big on not just doing um films with no purpose you know like they have mm-hmm. to be something there something that when you go home you think about that like wow i never i never really thought about it like that you know that's that's important to me um so i would i would do a science fiction film and i have a lot of directors that i'm like i really i would not mind being you know uh, right mentored by <laughs> you know right obviously i mean i love steven spielberg jj abrams um, Anthony Fuqua, Tim Story, Guillermo del Toro, uh, Christopher Nolan, Peter Jackson. <laughs> the list goes on and on. The list. Yes, yes. But those guys are, to me, though, they are people who truly understand storytelling. And mm. I feel like when you when you understand storytelling, it doesn't matter what the story is or if it's sci-fi or if it's zombies or if it's, you know, right. Drama. Cause you could not be a sci-fi person, but if the right. story is good, exactly. you would still enjoy it. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. so those are the guys that I kind of, you know, admire and, and, you know, um, really try to keep in mind when I'm doing something, it's like, it's not about, I'm not, a, I don't like gore anyway. I mean, I, I watch gore, but it's not my favorite, you know, my, my mm-hmm. horror films are not gory. They're more psychological, like Hitchcock mm-hmm. style. Um, but if I'm doing a story, I'm always thinking about the story, the story, the story with, you know, it has to be an amazing story that just so happen to have aliens or so happen to have, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, a- any one of those guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's an awesome list. Yeah. That's a, I think, you know, some of them are, most of them are on my list too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They are, they are the legends in the game. Man. Mm-hmm. They're awesome. Okay, so before we close out, um, for any filmmaker that would want to start to get into making films in uh, sci-fi or or horror fantasy, uh, what would be uh, your top tips for them? Um, Well, um, the top tips, I mean, uh, I guess I I really don't like to tell people what to think and how to go about, you know, because... Mm -hmm. 
I'm an artist and I don't believe that artistry can be taught. I believe that mm. it can be taught, but artistry yeah. is expression of self. And, mm -hmm. and the only way for you to be who you are meant to be is for you to be who you are meant to be, if that makes any sense. It does. Um, so um, I, I would say just, you know, watch lots of movies, watch movies that, that inspire you or that, gra that you gravitate towards. And then um, try to start reverse engineering it, figuring out, you know, why it works. Um, yeah. Don't get caught up so much on the red or the Sony F5 or Alex Air Alex. I mean, like, <laughs> right. those are all the toys that we all, you know, die to shoot with. And you will eventually shoot with them. I mean, I've shot with them and it's like amazing, but mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you got to kind of like baby step, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I've seen crap shot on those amazing cameras. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. Try not to get caught up in, in, in the toys as much, but more so in the technique of your storytelling, you know, um, figure out what, what moves people. You know, um, one of the jobs that I had, which was probably the most awesome and crappiest at the same time, was, uh, <laughs> was I had a job where um, I screened uh, movie trailers and it, it, it didn't pay hardly anything, but it was the most insightful job that I had ever had because I sat with people mm -hmm. all day and I basically went down a survey and said, Hey, you know, would you watch this movie? And this was months, if not a year or so before the movie was, was going to be, you know, shown or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I basically, they, you know, they went through and said, yeah, we like this and we like that. And, and I was just shocked at the things that people gra were gravitating towards, you know? Mm -hmm. So it taught me a, a lot about the human psyche, you know, so it's just like kind of studying people and understanding, um, understanding the world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. So so when it comes to like for me, when it comes to fear, uh, I don't think there's anybody better than Alfred Hitchcock. I mean, because mm. his thing was you don't have to always show a person um, what they're supposed to be afraid of because they may not be afraid of that. But if I right. told them that there was something making some loud thumping sound with some scratching down a hallway, your brain is going to fill in what you're most afraid of. My brain, exactly. Is, you know, so it's about the human psyche and understanding those things. So yeah. I was, if you were going to get into it, those would be the most important. And then just learning the, uh, the technical part, you know, learning, you know, how do I create, uh, you know, a film, you know, I wouldn't say yeah. start with a short, I didn't start with a short, <laughs> you know, but, but learning the techniques and yeah, I mean, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. I mean, you probably won't stop making mistakes, you know, right. It, right. It, honestly, true. you shouldn't. I mean, it, exactly. Because if you, if you have stopped, that means that you're not growing, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, it's just trying new things, you know, just kind of figuring out what you want to do, but, just not giving up, just just not giving up, not listening to naysayers, because you're gonna find, oh my God. Everywhere. Oh my God, yes, yes. Everywhere. So, so you know, when people say what you can't do, you're like, ah, it's cool, speak for yourself. You know what I mean? Just, right, right. Yeah, yeah, if you can't do it, I understand, don't worry about it. You know, just, you know, just kind of let that stuff roll off your shoulders. But, um, but yeah, those will be, you know, the key things is just kind of studying um, the films, um, learning psyche, the psyche, you know, of, of people, of whoever you're trying to scare or excite or whatever it may be. And then just learning the, the technical, you know, um, aspect of that. And then just teaming up with other people that are really good at what they do, you know, yeah. but you know, you got to make sure that you have something to bring to the table. A lot of times people want to team up and they have nothing to bring to the table. Right. They and, just want to latch on to yeah. someone who they feel is successful in what mm -hmm. they want to do. And that's, yeah. That's a bad approach. I mean, it's like going for a job. When you go for a job interview, you have to have something on that resume. You got to be bringing something to the table. You know, they're not right. going to give you a job because your name is John or whatever. You know, it's, you know, it's, it doesn't <laughs> right. work like does not work like that. Yeah. So we actually we yeah. actually have a um, we actually have a show, a podcast that we're getting ready to, uh, a video uh, podcast we're getting ready to put out. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I might have to have you on mine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But you it's guys going to be talking to filmmakers or? Yeah, yeah. We're going to be talking to filmmakers. We got a, like a lot of local guys, um, then, um, then a lot of our L.A. guys that we know. Mm -hmm. And then um, we're also going to be 
of our meetings and all these other things that's going to be happening with the film. We're also going to be like kind of taking people along for their ride on that, you know? So, mm. um, so yeah, we're, we're working on that now. So it's going to be that's pretty cool. awesome. Like, you got to check it out. It's called. Help uh, me in. Yes. Yes. Help me in. I'll make sure that once you guys get that going, I'll, you know, push for you guys too. Awesome. We got awesome. to do that for each other. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's, thing, that's another thing that we have to make sure that we do is just kind of, band together and strengthen one another you know that's important yeah ah that's true okay we do have one question before we go I think, okay let's see how can indie film lovers better support filmmakers hmm, that's a good one yeah that's i mean I, I think everybody will probably answer that a little differently um for us um the support is liking sharing yeah. content going to check it out, you know, and just yeah. kind of just supporting it, you know, just by clicking, you know, and then those yeah. are powerful. They're, they're very powerful because at the end of the day, I mean, that was one of the questions that we got at the premiere is like, but like, how can we help you from here? Um, we know that we're going to need millions upon millions to do this project. Yeah. So to, to ask the community to do that is just kind of unrealistic, but, but we realize that if we, if we are able to show that people are interested in what we're doing, then we will be able to get the money to produce it, to show it to people. And, you know, right. it was just kind of that, just, just supporting, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. It, doesn't, it doesn't cost anything to, to go click and go like and, and comment. And right. Things. It's just, it's right. Just so, so yeah. If they, so if they, yeah, follow, following those filmmakers on uh, social media or um, on their website, Right, you know, which, which they, they with their crowdfunding because that's right. something that I like to do. Right, right. Even, well, you know, even if it's just a few dollars here and there, right. it adds up when you know so many people are supporting. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. we're we're pretty much on we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube. We're pretty much on all of them. Uh, we're just Rebirth Films, um, and you know you can find us on all of all of those platforms. And then we also have a fan page on uh facebook which has the tales from the blood fairies uh fan page which has a lot of content on it you know but we're going to be migrating that all over into our just our rebirth uh, <coughs> excuse me rebirth films um page but so that's rebirth r-e-b-i-r-t-h films rebirth films mm -hmm. all, across yeah. their social media and tales from the blood fairies they have a facebook page yeah. uh as well and then website is up Right. It's, uh, for everything else that you yeah. all have been doing yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. That, that mm -hmm. one is rebirth-films.com. So, yeah, they can check that out. So, we're going to be refreshing that soon. And then our podcast is called Unapologetic Filmmaking and Dope Ish. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's just kind of our thing is like, you know, we, you don't need to ask permission to be yourself, be who you're going to be, create what you're going to create. And that's kind of that's what we're going to be talking about on, on the show. It's just, we're unapologetically making films. We're just doing you it. You're just Absolutely. doing it. That's it. Yeah. Just doing it. Any last words before we disconnect for tonight? No, I mean, I just, listen, I just want to say, I really, really do appreciate you doing this interview. I had a lot, I had a blast. And, you know, I did too. You made it so easy for me. Well, good. My first yeah. one. <laughs> good. I mean, you did, I mean, you did a great job. So Thank I mean, you. Yeah, I it was easy. So, um, yeah, I just I mean, just I like I said, just continue to support. Um, um, check us out on all the social media sites. Uh, the, like I said, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all of those things were Rebirth Films. Um, and I mean, that's really about it. You know, just I, I say, follow your dreams. I don't what, whoever you are, whatever you want to do, even if it's not film, just follow your dreams. Just do dreams. do you. <laughs> That is that is the last thing I words for tonight. Thank you again, no and problem. thank you for everybody that um, joined in tonight. I will be uh, posting recording to um, my YouTube page. That'll be posted uh, in the Real Three Sixty Five Facebook group. Real Three Sixty Five R E E L Three Six Five Facebook group. I will um, 
post the link for this video and all future videos. Uh, next up, we're supposed to have someone uh, from Chicago. I haven't confirmed, but another filmmaker from Chicago. I'm hoping to do these every week. So um, if you know anyone who's interested, go on and contact me on Facebook, uh, Real365. And thank you again, Omari. Not we'll be problem. talking and catching up soon. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll keep you updated and you keep me updated. We'll keep supporting each other. Sure will. All righty. Thanks again. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.